Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Today. And let us continue our last let's off. So we've opened up a railway, which is great. Um What do you have to say? Queen demands reparation for 15 day war. No, I don't think we're gonna do that. But uh discussion changes on the law. Lucy and I sat in my office waiting for Peter. I was at my desk and he was on the sofa, legs crossed. Sir, I have some news for you. Mr. Hall and I have been working on several possible plans to boost the economy. As is our focus. He's currently compiling a very detailed report with suggested projects. I'm sure you'll have a chance to see it soon. He looked at his watch again. Looks like Mr. Vice President is late yet another time. He lowered his voice. I'm slightly concerned about Peter. He needs to have, have his mind occupied. He's been late to almost every meeting we've had recently. I've noticed it too. I need to talk to him in private sometime. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. It was Peter. He walked inside with flies in both hands. No, files. <laughs> Makes way more sense. Gentlemen. Welcome, Peter. Have a seat. Thank you. He placed the files on my table, uh, took out several documents, and organized them in front of me. Here's everything, just as you asked, our plans for the next reforms. You can use your potential decrees to enact reforms now, but you don't have political capital. I also brought a list of suggestions, uh, suggested reforms for our party. What are your thoughts, Anton? Let's go over the documents. I took a look at the documents. You can select up to three laws to enact. So, I cannot purge general staff. I cannot do relocation of doctors, gun ownership rights, prove independence of the central bank, capital punishment. So I can do three things. Gender equality and education. Let's do... Okay, well, actually, you guys do things for us. I think you are fine. Trade and commerce in Sorland has a few regulatory uh, measures resulting in unfair competition at times. Protect local industries could be could be useful. The retirement. I mean, we're already here's like we're broke. Let's do fair trade and competition commission. Allow private prisons. I mean, it gives us more money. But we're, here's the thing. Like, if I'm already at negative two. Kind of like thinking this one. You know, let's do amnesty for all sort of era prison political pit of prisoners. I've had a brief discussion. I took notes about my decisions. Most of the political criminals in from, uh, from the Seoul era are old communists and British nationalists. The MC will surely be controversial, but it should also reflect good with the British and the left. Yes, but it's also anchored a lot of the nationalists and the soulist. If we cannot make the socialists or the British vote for us instead of their primary parties of choice, this amnesty might be damaging for us. Peter placed his finger on my notes about the Fair Trade Commission. That's a nice one. The commissions will uh, be essential in dealing with the monopolies. It was a time to establish a body that regulates economic competition. Looks like that either Miss Walder or the First Lady has a huge influence on your other decision. It's about time that we went about with uh, after equal rights for our ladies, if only because all those women marches are starting to get annoying. This is, however, anger a lot of conservatives. Let's not forget the fact that the biggest bulk of our voters aren't socially liberal. This is a risky move right before the election. Half the women is half of the, half of the country is women, Lucian. Yes, but how many of them actively involved in these demands for change? It is a mistake to make generalizations because of a vocal minority, but let's move on. I mean, we've already kind of aligned ourselves with the PFJP party, so I, I feel like any notion is kind of like gone out the window for that kind of stuff. It's the 20th century, and we still don't guarantee some basic rights for women. It's unacceptable. I understand, sir. Well, we both respect your decision, Anton. But now that everything's settled, I should get to work. We'll catch up soon. Lucien looked at his watch. We actually have six more minutes, but very well. Let's call it here. Thank you both. Thank you all. Be a little more exact. So what do we got? Geopolitical. What are you saying? Circling over Stallport. Uh, Prime Minister of Lesbia. Rain makes decree for gender equality. Political prisoners received amnesty. 
mission to ensure free competition and free trade and rain shadow soldier school tradition. What's what's changed? We got average transportation links. Dispute with the interior. Seems like that could be a problem. And we got general uh, equality. And you're probably just telling us the three things. Nope, it's just me going to the railway uh, opening. You got some trade talks with uh, Vagsland. And we need to make sure that this doesn't go badly. Because I think we need them to be an ally. If they had like the biggest navy, it seems really important. If Runeberg has a bigger navy than we do, they could easily blockade our ports in, in a war. And that would be very bad. Midnight was approaching when our delegation boarded SRS uh, Hostlord. The large ship was once a royal yacht for King Edmund himself, but the order of by, by the order of Saul is repurposed to serve as leaders of Sorland for state visits. We departed from the port of Latvian along with a few other smaller escort boats. And to luxurious compartments reserved for the head of state, I laid down on the bed to rest my eyes where we arrived at Willenburg, a major city in Vogsland. Market Sea was known for its treacherous waters, however, the trip so far had been rather calm and quiet. But I couldn't sleep. I went out to the upper deck to have some fresh air. Sea breeze brought the salty and briny smell. I saw David leaning over the railway railings, looking at the horizon, and I decided to join him. Mr. President, I'm surprised you're up still this late. I just can't sleep. Do you mind if I ask why? Are you also worried about the future all the time? I'm an old man, Mr. President. I've been along for more than 70 years. I spent most of those years worrying about various things endlessly. What I realized in my time was that worrying is simply a part of life. As the mankind, we are as the mankind we are for, uh, forever gullible. We always think about reaching out for what we don't have, and as part of what we don't have, we have choices that we could have made and results. Thank you for your wisdom, David. Anytime, Mr. President. It's getting chilly out here. I might just go now and try to get some sleep. I am an old man after all. I recommend you do the same. I will stay a little longer. Very well. Good night. Hopefully, I don't. Hopefully, it doesn't lead to like, me getting like sick or something. I watched the sea from, for some more time before going back to my compartment to sleep. The dawn arrived and her ship moored at the busy port of Willenburg. Among the usual flashes on the camera, we made our way to the train station in the convoy where we took the train for, uh, to Halem for an uneventful trip. We arrived at the central train station of Halem, the capital city of Vogtland. There was an incredible amount of people waiting for us. We stepped out of the train and immediately flashes went off. Our delegation met with various members of the Vogtland cabinet. We took the cars and arrived at the Royal Palace. Flags of Vogslan and CSP were waving next to the entrance. Assistant soaked my belongings, led me to the museum wing. It was there I saw Chancellor Hegel. He was expecting uh, he was expecting a very large painting on the wall. I cleared my throat. I turned around. He was a man of small stature with a balding spot and a striking visage. His famous pipe was in his mouth. After a quick glance, he smiled and opened his arms. We hugged and patted me on the shoulder. Comrade Rain, it's so good to see you. I wanted to meet you in person for a long time. Likewise, he gestured towards the painting. This was made in 1776 by famous Vogslan painter Otto Kernberg. I looked at the painting. It must have been over five meters tall. It was a battle scene. On the left, there were banners carrying vo uh, carried by vlogs, and, uh, and on the right, swords. Countless spears uh, formed a triangle in the center, and the sky was red from blood. What do you think about it? I think if we've come far. After all, we are standing here side by side instead of on the battlefield. We can do so much more through unity, Comrade Rain. We started walking. To me, this painting tells us how we've come so far. Swords and vlogs uh, might have had troubles in the past, but looking past that, we are brothers of old. No other two countries have understood each other more in the world. I think it is great to hear these important words coming from you. He nodded and pointed towards another painting that was almost as large as the first one. A burning city was uh, depicted. Looking closer, I realized that it was Conrad. The Great Fire of Conrad. Well, shameful event in entire Vagslan history. The scars of it must uh, be aching. Another result of the evils of imperialism. Well said, Conrad Rain. Thankfully, we've cut off the head of the snake called Imperialism here in Vagsland. The guard approached us. Approached the chancellor. If you excuse me for one moment, the chancellor stepped away with the guard. While I looked around, I saw a more recent painting de uh, depicting a upheaval of farmers against the aris an aristocrat. What did you say? Hegel's loud voice echoed in the empty halls. Give the miners what they want. As for the director of the company, I won't try for treason against Vogland at once. No one can exploit our people and expect to get away with it. After giving the order, the guard hastily left. Hegel walked over to me. Sorry about that. You know how it is. What was that about? Director of the Mining Corporation decided not to pay his miners. He had to be handled. Revolution is a slow process, Comrade Rain. 
Slow but sure. Follow me. We will have a short breakfast. We made our way to the exquisite dining hall. I looked around and everything seemed to have been made out of the colors of gold, blue, and white. A local delicacy, smoked bear meat, was served with eggs. After a very delicious meal, we sat down on two couches and immediately saw a portrait of Leon Malinov staring down at me. What can you tell me about Comrade uh, Maliev? Ah, you swatted the portrait. Well, where do I begin? Uh, Comrade Malinev is a good friend of mine. Although I don't agree with him on every matter, he demands respect. Voxlanian socialism aims to eliminate the power of the state through promotion of, resp of responsibility, freedom, and well-being of the people. One of our key cornerstones is the devotion to society to smaller councils with a high citizen participation. We believe that the revolution in Voxland is stable enough that we can that we do not need the vanguardist approach to the Malinivism. We are already in the process of such transformation. However, our revolution here in Voxland owes a great deal to Maliev. He is a father of Malinivism and a symbol of global revolution. Not only is he the first communist revolutionary leader of the world, he managed to unite his a whole continent. Uh, forming uh, the greatest country in the world. Kind of rain, if you like. I can put in a good word for you with Comrade Maliev. I have a good feeling you will get along with him. Would you like that? I mean, sure. I, I Apparently the other people don't like me that much, so it'd be good. Very well. Two so cups of coffee were brought by an assistant. I took a sip while he lit his pipe. Let, let's begin then. Now, before you say anything, I think you will be glad to hear that I accept the deal. I had my doubts at the beginning, but they, are, they were clear to once I met you in person. Same goes for me too, Carmen Hegel. Thank you. What's the deal between Vagsland and Sorland? We have uh, so much more possibility between our countries. I will sign the paper shortly. He got up from his seat, walked over to the window, and looked outside. Now that is out of the way, there are two things that come to mind. He turned to me. I think you and I are, are, are like-minded peop uh, people, Comrade Rain. I would like to solidify our newfound relationship and administration over a military alliance between Vagsland and Sorland. A pact that connects the two continents? No, it's much more than that. The strongest pact that will come... I ever came to be between are the vlogs and the swords. He clenched his fist and looked at me. What do you say, Conrad Rain? Are you ready to achieve greatness together with me? I, I think an alliance with him makes sense. I accept Conrad Hegel. May this brighten the future for both our countries. Most excellent. So we've got an alliance with you. He called the assistant nearby. A moment later, the assistant turned with two glasses, two shots of vodka. In the vlogs land, we drink on a contract, Conrad Rain. We clinked glasses and did our shots. A strong taste of alcohol turned into a sweater, a sweeter aftertaste. Hagel looked down for a moment, and he returned back to the window to look outside with his arm crossed behind his back. You know what pisses me off? Those damn Agnolians who claim our land is theirs. Like, it's not enough. They killed my people in their homes, and Highsland slaughtered them like cattle. Imagine what they did to the Swordish people. What would you do, Comrade Rain? Comrade Hegel, I urge, uh, urge calm on the matter. No one wants war. Vogslan is being attacked. Agnolia wants war. How can I stay calm? If they want to mess with Vogslan, they might. They will see our might. He turned to me and put his hand on my shoulder. Comrade Rain, I am planning to invade Hageland to save the Vogslan citizens from their clutches of the murderous Agnolians. Do, don't worry. I don't wish to pull Sorlin into a conflict in any way. This is not your battle after all. What I want from you is simple. I can't risk international backlash, but if I have you... I, if I have Sorlin behind our cause, everything will be easier. I want you to recognize Hajiland as Vagladian territory. What do you say, Conrad Rain? Are you with me? Well, right now, according to our map, it's part of Agnolia. You know, I won't meddle in the affairs. You're not sure. I'm, I'm with you. Then it is time. We've achieved a lot today, Conrad Rain. Another. So we had another shot of vodka, so we're just going to get hammered. His eye wide and clenched his fist in anger. Agnolian said, what? He composed himself and smiled at me. Comrade Rain, I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. There's a matter I need to attend to. Is there anything I can help with? Thank you for the offer, but no. Have a good day and enjoy Halem. We shook hands and Hagel left in a hurry. So we have some military, which I'm assuming is... Experience general, large reserve pool. No, it's in diplomacy. So we got free trade zone of Vogsland, Tungsten trade, and trade tariffs. So they are now imposing tariffs on us. Kind of what we should expect. And we have two things of news. Sorland and Vogsland Pact. And Sorland recognized Hadjiland as Vogslandian territory. We got a private meeting with uh, Peter. Is there anything else we need to do first?
I don't believe so. So yeah, let's have a private meeting with Peter. It was a dark, chilly evening when Peter called and asked if we could meet. He gave no details. All he said that was that important. I drove uh, alone through Hogsland suburbs until I reached a meeting point named 147 Warhawk Avenue, number 26. Our old campaign headquarters, untouched since the night of the election. This is where everything began. I made my way up to dusty staircase of the office building. The light in the second floor hallway was out, so I used a cigarette lighter to, uh, to find my way to the wooden door marked 26. I pulled on the handle, but it wouldn't budge. The heavy door was always been a pain to open. Coming! Peter pushed the door open with all his might. He made a screeching sound as it opened. Without further ado, I bid you welcome to the Grand Nostalgia Trip, hosted by yours truly, Peter Vectrin. He made an exag exaggerated bow. The dust from the open door was still settling down. Feel sentimental yet? I remember it... I remember it as being much cleaner. That's what time does to things, my friend. You're looking a little shabby yourself than you did back then. Come over here, remember this? We walked over to his old desk and pointed to the gramophone that had annoyed our neighbors and kept us company for many late nights. Peter flipped the switch, and it filled the room with swing music from the 20s. I'll be damned, it still works. So, are you going to tell me why we're here? In a bit. He put his hand on the table, uh, under the desk, and brought a bottle out. He took a swig out of it and passed the bottle to me. Aren't there any glasses? Palace life is pampering you too much. Just drink from the bottle like the old days. Remember where we came from. Peter snapped his fingers to the music while going through the items in the room. It looked virtually unchanged since election night. Come on. Have a look around. See if it doesn't bring back memories. I'll go through the records. My way through the ground phone and started flipping through the records next to it. I found one of my favorite albums ever. Mountains by Janet Ruse. A set of uh, playing the folk songs that made me yearn for the countryside whenever I heard it. What a classic. You should mail that to Frank so we can learn what real music is. I'll take the record. I just pulled the record out, put it under my arm, and placed it next to the door. Look. Yes, yes, all in a good time. He gestured a bottle. Fine, I'll drink. I took a swig for out of it and passed it back to Peter. He took a very big gulp out of the bottle and staggered to the side afterwards. I know, I know you, Peter. What are you hiding? Nothing. Let's go up to the roof. The view has always been amazing up there. We went up the stairs to the roof. The view was mesmerizing. The business of Hostler twinkled below us while the stars shone bright in the sky. We sat and leaned back against the wall, taking it all in. Right as I started to get up, I heard a sobbing sound. I turned to Peter and saw tears streaming down his cheeks. What's wrong? He wiped the tears away. I messed up, Anton. I messed up big time. Did you cheat at the gentleman's club? Because that definitely seems like a thing that you probably did. Evelyn's leaving me. She wants a divorce. You two have always had rough patches. I'm sure you'll kiss and make up. It's different this time. I... I've been sleeping with Livia Suno. You've been sleeping with my secretary? <laughs> this, this is not what I saw coming at all. Actually, You've been what? <laughs> like, that's why... I know she's her secretary, but I'm sorry. It's just... Evelyn had been the same since she lost her job, and Livia's been giving me uh, sultry looks from the day I hired her. You were away, I was drunk, one thing led to another. But she's more than just a pretty girl, Anton. She's smart and kind, and I think we're really connected. Um... Don't tell me you're gonna run off with her. No, no, we're ending things. I told her it's too unprofessional, I want Evelyn back. Who else knows why me and the three of you? Nobody, I swear. Well, maybe Lucian, since he knows everything. But you never know he spilled the- you, you know he never spilled the beans. There was an edge of desperation in Peter's voice. He took another drink. How many years have we known each other? How many scraps have we gone by? Uh, I mean, how many scrapes have we gotten ourselves out of? I can handle this. Just trust me. I turned to face my friend and vice president. The habits that had gotten him dubbed the bad boy of Swordish politics when we were young were no longer so charming coming from a middle-aged man. Yet... He's still a capable politician. I couldn't ignore our long history together. Um. It's just, you know, you've done enough damage. I'll handle this myself. Without waiting for his uh, reaction, I left the rooftop alone to make my way downstairs. On my way out, I grabbed my lungs and took one last look back at the office. I had been home to some happy memories for sure, but the visit had permanently cured me of my nostalgia. As soon as I arrived home, I headed to my study, sat down, and stared at the telephone. I picked up the phone and dialed Peter's home number. Evelyn answered after a few rings. Anton, it's late. Is everything all right? I told her I knew about her, Peter, and Lavia. Oh. She was silent for so long that I thought she might have hung up. 
Whatever you have to say, it won't change my mind. Ah, okay. Am I am I a matchmaker? That's, that's a good question. Peter still loves you. He was in tears when we talked and gave a short, sharp laugh. Do you know Peter at all? Do you really know him? Livy wasn't the first, and she won't be the last. There's always another beautiful young woman for him to prey on. I don't I don't like any of these options. Um I mean, she wasn't willing... Uh, I mean, there's that power dynamic kind of situation going on there. I don't like... I Again, I, I guess I'll go with the middle option, even though I hate all of them. He said that, did he? Look at who he goes after. Secretaries, kitchen staff, aides. Remember Brenda? What do you think they have in common? When the vice president asks them for sex, they might lose their job if they refuse. That's kind of what I was just thinking. I'd go to media about this if it wasn't uh, Persona Non Grata at Hostler Port. Um, and if there was a shit of chance, I'd be taken seriously. But at the very least, I will no longer be an accomplice to abuse of power, and frankly, Anton, neither should you. Evelyn hung up without waiting for me to respond. I took a, mo a minute to think about what she had said. Do I call Lucian? No, don't, don't, don't call Lucian. I put down the phone and head to the bedroom. Nobody else had to get involved in this. I sat in the bed, careful not to sleep, disturb my sleeping wife. I would tell her the news about Peter and Evelyn tomorrow. I hoped it wouldn't upset her too much. I couldn't sleep at all that night. Hey, look at, look how much development we have. We're so good. Okay. Um, but I think, well, first let's check the news. Let's be a trade sanction against Sorland. Kind of saw that coming. And what else? I talked to Evelyn. I mean, look at this. We are at, what, one, two, three, six, I think eight out of ten? That's pretty good. The economy's definitely improving, but I think for right now, this is going to be a good time for us to end this episode. So thank you everybody for watching. My name is Anselm. If you enjoyed, put a thumbs up. Not to do it, thumbs down. Watch more, subscribe, and goodbye.